Black Ops 6 just came out, and I'm already almost first prestige and I have eight gold weapons. Today, I'm going to give you guys the best settings for more FPS, better aim, better movement, better audio, you name it. Let's get into it. We have some new and cool secret settings you're going to want to stay for, but let's go and talk about things as quickly as possible. Display mode, full screen exclusive. Make sure your screen refresh rate is on the correct number. Display re resolutions on the correct number. Then you want to go down here. Usually my brightness, I put it slightly higher than the default, which is 50. So right now I have it on 54 just because certain areas on the map is dark. Reflex, make sure this is on on plus boost, but on is also fine. Make sure your V-Syncs are both off. This is definitely going to help to get more frames. And then if you go down here, focus mode on zero and HDR on off. Next, quality, make sure it's on custom. Make sure your render resolution, again, is on the correct number. Dynamic resolution off. And then you're going to want to put on fidelity cast. Now, as soon as you put on fidelity cast, you can go to show more and then you want to up the strength. This is going to make your game look so much sharper and clear. You can be like, wow, it makes a huge difference. I currently have mine on 95, but usually between 85 to 95 is good because if you go to 100, it gets kind of sharp. Uh, my VRAM scale targets on 80. Make sure this is on normal, low, off, low, very low, on, off, low, minimal. And again, we're trying to aim for better frames, better performance while still maintaining some good quality. So a lot of these settings are going to be off or low or normal. Low, normal, off, 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 low, off, low, off, off, off. Next, let's go to the view tab. For FOV, I am on 107. Now, there's a theory that under 107 FOV, you get more aim assist. For some reason, when you go higher, it's worse. And I wouldn't recommend going anything higher than 110 in multiplayer. So usually between like 95 to 107 is a pretty good spot. But I don't like being too zoomed in. So I plan on a higher FOV. Of course, Affected is going to give you less visual recoil, and it's almost a must. Weapon field of view, it doesn't really matter why it makes your gun look smaller, but some people like narrow because it makes your like centering of the screen bigger. So it just depends what you want. I like seeing my gun smaller and having like less on my screen, so I have it on wide. And of course, you're going to want to make sure your blurs are both off because this is going to distract you and it just hurts you more than it helps you. And for your first person camera mo movement, at least at 50%. So you have less visual shaking and recalling on your screen. Next, let's talk about a very important aspect of this game because of the movement and everything. And obviously, we're going to be breaking down a lot of settings. Now, this is obviously applies to even if you're mouse and key, because a lot of these settings do matter, especially when it comes to the movement and combat stuff. So I do have it on 7.7 seven currently. Most pros play on 6.6.1. I have it on 7.7, 7, like 0 0.87, which is almost 6 ADS sense. Now, I recommend between 6 to 8 sensitivity. I think it's the most beneficial when it comes to consistency in your aim uh, and movement, all that good stuff, and allows you to still snap and be pretty productive on the map. So don't go too high. Don't go too low. Usually 6 to 6, 6 1 is usually the most pros play on, but 7 7 is also doable. I have this on off, off, and of course, I have my button layout on tactical flipped. Just put it on whatever layout you want and make sure to turn on flipped over here. Controller vibration off. Dead zone inputs, very important. I have my left stick on one because I want it to be very reactive when it comes to movement. Left stick maximum on 70. That way, when I move my stick, if you can see it right here, I'm going to test the stick dead zone. When I move my stick, as soon as I hit the circle, I'm already all the way max. I don't have to go all the way to the end of the circle to hit the maximum movement. As soon as I touch this red line here at 70%, it's already maxed out. So basically, it makes you move faster. Your, your movement just becomes more, more reactive, more quicker. It's just better overall. Right stick max on 99. You don't want to touch this. Right stick minimum on 3. Now, by default, this thing starts at 15. Terrible. Horrible. Do not have this on 15. You're hindering your aim, and you're not even realizing it. The default in some odd pass cards used to be 5. The thing is, or 5 or 10, but obviously, you notice know stick drift sometimes when you have it that low. Stick drift is something you can combat yourself, and when you're playing, you're not going to notice it. It's only when you stop moving. But ideally, you want to be on five the highest if you can. And then you can mess around like between two, three to five. Uh, those are some pretty good numbers. If you have to go slightly higher, go slightly higher. If you have to go over 10, just you got to get a new controller because I'm telling you right now, it's hurting your aim. You're having less control of your aim and your stick and it's making you shoot worse. Next, if you go to aiming, there is a sensitivity multiplier area and you're wondering where do you change your ADS? It's, it's right here. So make sure you go down here and then I have mine on 0 0.87 again. So when I'm ADS on 7.7, it's a little bit slower. And then, of course, there's also aiming advanced settings. But the only thing you really want to change here is their one setting for aim assist, aim response curve type. 
You're going to want to put this bad boy on dynamic like we do every single year. Everything else, you pretty much want to leave the same here. So those are some of the two most important settings on this tab. And of course, make sure you have aim assist on because keyboard and mouse players are OP. Next, let's talk about the movement tab. Omni movement is a thing in this game and you need to understand all these settings. And one thing I, I do want to show you guys something as well very quickly. So obviously in past cause and even this one, when you tactical sprint eight into ADS, it's slower than when you just sp normal sprint into ADS. So some things people are testing is instead of having on tactical sprint assist on, you just put it, which is automatic. This is it's automatic tactical sprint, like in past CODs. You just put it on on, which is basically like regular sprint. Now, that's basically going to allow you to sprint normal and then ADS a little bit quicker than you would if you were doing a tactical sprint. But there's ways to combat that, which we'll get into uh, in a second. Sprint and assist delay zero. Make sure these two are on. This is going to help you with the omni movement. So basically, when you slide sideways or backwards, it's going to give you that, that full boost sprint. So, you know, you can use the momentum to hit those movements. Uh, mantle assist, I have it on low. So that way you can mantle certain things, but it's not very strong. Sideways off, backwards off, off, uh, tight on mantle um, assist angle. Crouch assist off, corner slicer on. Corner slicer is basically a setting where if you, you know how you ADS next to walls or certain areas, certain angles, it like basically leans for you. I like the setting. I think the lean effect is really cool. And on top of it being cool, I think it's just a little bit beneficial because it gives you that little bit extra angle to see people or maybe shoot people. Slide dive behavior. I do have this on hybrid. I feel like diving is definitely more useful in this game than it has been in the past couple of CODs. And it's and sliding, of course, is a no-brainer. MW3, tap to slide was good to go to. Hybrid is really cool because of the Omni movement. I really recommend you guys get used to Omni movement and getting used to hybrid. Uh, auto door peak off, sprint restore, make sure this is on and make sure slide maintain sprint is on as well. Uh, parachute, that doesn't matter. And then you want to go to the movement advanced settings. And now this goes back to what I was talking about aim, sprint aim assi uh, assist. So earlier I talked about how you want to have sprint assist on and not on tactical sprint assist, even though you can have it on tactical sprint assist. Both work. It's just what works for you and what you feel more comfortable with. And when you go to movement advanced settings, you're going to want to make sure your single tap to run for your tactical sprint activation. That way, Basically, you're going to automatically, when you click in your stick, you're going to be able to tactical sprint right away, right? So it's going to be good to use while using the uh, tactical, the, the, the sprint assist just on on. Also, make sure you have grounded mantle off here. And of course, plunging underwater free. That's going to be the go to. Next for combat, a lot of this doesn't really apply to multiplayer. Um, I mean, this is kind of all default. Obviously, armor play behaviors apply all for good for war zone. All this is pretty much default combat advanced settings. Again, a lot of this is default. You can sprint to cancel reload if you want. But nowadays we do like that. We like having that, you know, ability to do that. Next, let's go to audio. So right now, if you want to get a look at my audio settings, I have my master game volume at 80. I have a little bit of gameplay music volume just for fun. I would usually recommend to have this at zero and then have your cinematic music volume at zero as well. The dialogue volume, I have this on 70. I would recommend somewhere between 60 to 70. So you hear the people in game talking, calling out UAV inbound or whatever they say that can actually be beneficial to you. Effects volume at 100, the most important volume, especially when it comes to listening to footsteps. So you definitely want to have this high. Now here I have this on Windows default and I have this on off. I know there's an enhanced uh, headphone mode and all those things, but right now I feel like I hear footsteps fine. Uh, as long as you just put your volume up and I have this on Treyarch mix and then I have this on off, 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 off. And of course, make sure this setting here is on on. Now let's talk about some other important things that the interface has that, you know, didn't even have in past call of duties. So first, let's start with the global. If we go down here, uh, this setting, you can obviously turn on your FPS counter, certain latency, uh, whatever you want to have on, you know, for your in-game, you know, GPU temperature, GPU time, all that helps. I mean, it's beneficial information for you just in case. But let's go to read ability. Now there's color customization. What you're going to want to do here, and I actually don't even have this on, is you want to go to your color filters. You want to go to filter two. You want to go to both. And make sure these are both at 100. This is going to give you more color, more pop, more saturation. It's going to make your game look incredible. On top of that, you can also mess around with these colors, you know, for you, your teammate, your enemy. Most people know about this, but if you don't, now you do. And then where a lot of important stuff are, your gameplay HUD. This is very, very important because 
what well, first of all they have hud presets now so you can basically put where you want your hud to be a uh, certain angle certain ways uh it's pretty cool magnified basically makes it a lot bigger i've tried that one it's kind of cool but it's a little overwhelming um so you can basically i like to have mine on standard or what's it called the magnified they're all pretty cool and then on top of it for your hud bounds you're gonna want to put this bad boy all the way in all the way in this is going to help so much with your mini map getting closer and you barely like i barely have to move my eyes to see my mini map because it's all the way closer to the middle of my screen on top of that you get all the other stuff like your ammo you know what weapon do you have out you know all the information is just there for you to see a lot easier so you're going to want to make sure you put that all the way in make sure your mini map is on a round or make sure it's on square not round because square is going to make your mini map essentially a little bigger which helps mini map rotation on and then of course if you go down here for your crosshairs you're going to want to make sure you turn this one on and then you can change your dot size if you want a larger largest default feels pretty good at most i'd go larger don't make it too big and then you can put your crosshairs color like i have mine red right now for fun which is like basically like a red dot in the middle of the screen plus my crosshair so it's kind of nice so this is a really cool dope setting to have and you can mess around with these things again it's very beneficial because it's going to help with your centering while you're maneuvering on the map. It's going to help you with snapping on people. And I really, really like this. Uh, for this, I got it on, on, on. And this is all on zero. I'm always here to help. And I'll be giving more tips and tricks as we go through Black Ops 6. Some more from aiming to movement to pro tips. Anything you can think of. Thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure to drop a like if this helped you. And if you enjoyed the video. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.